And the higher self journey, you probably received, you know, our email about it. And that's why you're here. Um, and it's a guided meditation we're going to do together to connect with the part of ourselves. You could say the inner landscape that is the most true and central, kind, beneficial to you, to the world. It, it's, it, depending on our belief systems, we might have different words for how to describe that, but I really find that it's in every tradition and, and um, some of us might be more kinesthetic sensors or more in the body sort of feeling. Some might be more open to, to listening to words or inner messages some might be more visual and it doesn't matter which way you get the information. Sometimes it's a little more confusing if you're, at least I have found, I'm a, I'm a real kinesthetic sort of um, somatic energy sensor. And so the way I experience the higher self is like a coming together into the center of the body and then, and then, um, sort of an opening energetically to feel that presence. And that's how I receive messages and energy and connection with my higher self and that connection with all kind of with the all with the universe, which we're all part of. And the higher self, you could say is a, is a lens or a modality to feel that connection. Now, if someone is more of um, more auditory, they, they might hear words, kind of wisdom words within as they connect to the higher self. And that might happen, like you might be more kinesthetic and then that auditory comes in as well. You might be more auditory and you get some energy experiences or movements in the body and some are very visual. So in the journey, you'll actually really really be seeing things, experiencing things through your sight. Don't worry if you don't see anything. When I guide you and use words like imagine or experience, that's in however you do so naturally. It may be through telling yourself a story about it. You may not see or feel or hear anything at all but you can still guide yourself through your own inner words. Your mind can still be present in the experience helping. So um, I think that's an important distinction. And I just want to check in that you guys can hear me. Okay. Um, let me know. I, I feel like I'm talking very quietly. Um, I'm trying to talk more loudly if needed, but I'm, I'm feeling very quiet this morning after meditating in preparation for this journey. Um, and I do have to say, hi, Jeremy, do you guys yeah, hear me? Plenty loud and clear, Magley. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. Great. So I don't have to try to project, um, this morning meditation and preparation for today's journey. I had the medicine Buddha chant just running through over and over again. And I have to say, I haven't done that practice in over a decade, more like two decades, so from 20 years ago, I did a lot of medicine Buddha practice and I, I just, it doesn't, it, on one level, it really doesn't matter, but on another level, I wanted to share that because I thought it was interesting that the medicine Buddha who is often depicted or maybe always depicted, I'm not sure as all blue was um, just those sounds were very present this morning. So um I kind of wanted to do a sort of call out and gratitude to the medicine Buddha and to the teachers who I actually have to say, the, the Tibetan teacher who I learned that from, um, I can't remember his name fully, the man from Tibet, the, there, there was a teacher of mine um, who is still alive and in the Bay Area who, who I learned that with, who I also do a call out to. Um, so let's, let's just begin and we're going to begin. Hopefully everybody is here because, um, Jeremy, if people enter sort of 
when we're past the breathing and the grounding, it's fine for people to come in during the breathing and grounding. But if people get here once we're already on the journey, it might be good for you to private message them just to listen and relax. But the, the first steps of the journey are important because we really open up to resources in the first part of the journey. I hate to close the door on Zoom. You know, if we were in a meditation room together, I would probably close the door. But in Zoom, I don't want to close the door. I don't want someone to arrive and not be able to come in. So just if you could give them that message, Jeremy, just to relax and listen, but we're already sort of into the journey. So we'll start by um, talking for a moment about our values. So higher self can be very connected to our values, kind of what we believe is the most important way of being in our life. Is it, and a value can be an emotion. Is it to trust? Is it to love? Is it to be discerning? Is it wisdom? Is it humor? Is it um, balance? What words come to you? Just be very honest with yourself. What feels the most creative? I'm just throwing out different words. Like for me, creativity is a huge one. Um, might be connection, honesty perseverance. Uh, what comes to you? Please share it in the chat. Let's share our values. Loyalty, self-love, healing might be one for someone. No right or wrong here. And as a chance to have tea before we start to. Happiness, connection, positivity, connection to spirit, freedom, creativity, more loyalty, honesty, ease and peace, safety, truth, integrity, faith, service, humor, balance, healing, integrity, love, humility, gratitude, authenticity, loyalty, connection, respect, compassion, honesty, healing, relaxation, joy, love, freedom, connection and trust. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so whatever yours are, see if you can kind of find them in your body. See if you can, um, in a sense, bring into your body right now, three of your top values. If it feels like too much to go that close, like right off the beginning, um, like into the body, then just imagine these around you, these values around you, do what feels the best for you today. Just imagining two to four values around you or within your body. And by, by within the body, it can just be simply touching a part of the body. Like you can't see my lower hand, but it's on my solar plexus and one hand on the heart. Someone else, it might be the lower belly and the ears <laughs> or the forehead or covering the eyes, you know, whatever feels right as you bring those values closer in, surrounding you or in the body and just take some nice, some nice relaxing breaths, noticing what it's like today to connect with your breathing. Allowing yourself to feel that frequency of the values that you say, the words. As you breathe and just notice as you inwardly say that word, sort of what, what shows up with that word? Is there an emotion? Is there an energy? Is there just a kind of perfume to that value? Movement, temperature. And just take some more nice deep breaths, moving on as you want to another value that is meaningful for you, that resonates with you. And through your values, you are beginning the journey into this connection 
with your higher self. And just allowing your exhale to be really long and relaxing and grounding. If you wish to go to another part of the physical body, either around the body or in the body, and just bring a value there. Breathing with it, noticing it. And just being very aware of whatever arises in your mind or your body emotionally as you allow the protection and the sense of that word to be with you right now. And if a new value jumps in, wanting attention, decide if you would like to honor that value with your attention and focus. And breath. And just letting yourself connect to the earth, whether that's through your feet, the soles of your feet, or feeling the surfaces underneath your body. As you breathe, imagine that there's a beautiful tube of light coming from your hips, your seat, your lowest energy center chakra, sending this wide tube of light like a tree trunk down into the light of the earth. And the earth's light comes up to greet you, to energize you. And as you breathe, Allow yourself a minute of this beautiful energy sharing with earth, grounding and connecting you, bringing safety, bringing a sense of presence, connection into your lower body. And just noticing the body as you breathe, noticing the heart space, the solar plexus, noticing the back body. And if you wish to just sort of lean back slightly and you might imagine a kind of beautiful showering or giving or holding sensation in the back body or just bring in a an imagination of that it does not have to be real but just notice what it's like to lean back and give permission to your back body to be open to receiving grace support, energy, kindness, love from your higher self, from the universe, from the divine, from nature, from other people who are safe. And from here, we're going to enter into the higher self journey. So just noticing your breath as it flows naturally, noticing the way you inhale and noticing how you exhale, bringing awareness to the way that the breath flows inwardly and then the way your breath flows out in the exhale. Every exhale, just allowing yourself to relax a little bit more.
And noticing your mouth, allowing your mouth to smile a little. And just with that smile, allowing the energy of the smile through the trunk of the body, through the arms and the legs. And just imagining how a smile feels as light radiating through the body. Bringing your attention to your feet again, feeling that earth, that grounding. Imagine a place in nature you feel very good in, very comfortable, noticing what that goodness in nature feels like. This could be anywhere, a forest, a beach, the desert, the mountains, your yard, a park you go to, and just allowing yourself to have permission on this journey to experience your imagination in the way that's most natural for you. Translating any of my guidance into the way you sense, the way you experience. So just imagining that place in nature and imagining how you feel there. Looking or sensing or feeling the landscape, noticing the light, the colors, the textures. and breathing as you bring your awareness to this place in nature, feeling your body connecting with it. Do you sit or walk, stand, lie down? Allowing your back body to be in connection with this very, very wonderful place in nature. And just see what it's like with your next exhale to allow yourself to relax even more there. Sensing what you hear there, if there are sounds, if there is wind or weather, sun shining, mist, rain, snow, the quality of the air. And always allowing yourself to bring in your own words, your own guidance. Let's just imagine in this place in nature, you, you find that there is a kind of bridge or ladder or steps, and you're curious to go to the next level of this wonderful place in nature. And you begin to walk across the bridge or up the steps or up the ladder and just each step you take, you become a little bit more easy, comfortable. Maybe, maybe one of your values is there with you, allowing you to feel that presence of your value as you walk and as you cross into the next level of this place in nature, one step at a time. And in this next level of the same place in nature that is so wonderful, you notice a new landscape, a new setting of some kind. 
it may be related to the previous place in nature or it might be different. Just noticing what that next level in nature is for you. Using all of your senses and trusting your most natural way to imagine, to feel, to know. You may want to walk around as you notice, or you may want to sit, imagining yourself meditating in this place in nature, or singing, or dancing, or sleeping, whatever you wish to do there. And just give yourself time to breathe. Feeling that smile again through the body. And somewhere in this place in nature is a guide or teacher or symbol of your higher self, of the part of you that is most kind, most beneficial, most caring for you and allows you to really be your authentic self. And you might find that there's a place in this place in nature, a little grotto or bench, a rock, a waterfall, somewhere you go to where there is a teacher there waiting for you. And they might be a plant or an animal, a person, a mythical being, an ancestor. They might be an element like the sun or the wind. They might even be an aspect of yourself. And just notice what comes to your imagination, allowing yourself to trust what is good and clear and beneficial for you. Able, you're completely able to change or redirect your journey at any time so that your teacher can change or transform as you wish. So if something comes to you as a wish, for your teacher or guide, then trust that wish and just imagine what you're wishing for. And returning to your breath, just noticing how it easy it is to breathe and feel your values with you in the presence of this teacher, this guide who is there to show you to help you in experiencing your higher self. This is your higher self teacher. And allowing yourself at whatever level you feel comfortable to ask your guide to show you an aspect of your higher self to show you how you sense, feel, think, or experience your higher self. This might be through metaphors or words or a deep knowing, a kinesthetic awareness. And just allowing your teacher or guide to show you an insight, a truth about your own higher self, your most authentic, benevolent, compassionate aspect at the deep soul level. And if you have a question for your guide, and you feel comfortable asking them, 
you can ask and then just allowing any information, allowing yourself to receive gifts, kindness, healing energy and allowing that gift, that answer, that healing energy, whatever it is for you to be experienced. It may be that you wish to relax the head or the back or the feet or the legs as you allow that higher self quality that higher self energy to be here with you, in you, around you. And any healing or gifts to be received in the best way possible for your system. Just breathing, allowing, Feeling that inner smile. This inner smile like a radiance, a luminosity, a growth and expansion at the soul level. And when you're ready, thank your teacher, your guide. And just watch or feel or know that they are moving into the landscape in their own way. They have supported you, shown you information, and now you allow them to go very comfortably, gently, into their realm, their place. And you notice again, the landscape you're in, in your imagination, noticing if there's colors, textures, smells, sensations in your landscape in nature. And going back to the bridge or the steps or the ladder and feeling your feet as you take the first step down, you may be holding a banister or a rope or some other surface as you walk step by step taking in the landscape as you go down back to that first level in nature where you feel so comfortable. And so just noticing when you're at the bottom of the ladder or the steps or you've made it across the bridge back to that first area in nature and noticing, remembering, bringing in the qualities of this place in nature into your experience, noticing sounds, colors, scents, just the way your body feels, how it is to imagine movement, how it is to feel movement there. And if there's any energy or sensing or knowing or thinking, just accepting and allowing as you connect even deeper with your own truth, feeling the comfort, the balance, the safety of this place in nature that you, you have, you have brought yourself to with great love and respect for yourself. And just take a deep breath of appreciation for yourself here in this place in nature that is your, your place of, of feeling good and resourceful. 
Noticing how your breath flows naturally. If it feels right, sensing that inner smile. And bringing either into the body or around you, your core values. More information about these values may be accessible to you now. And just noticing the trunk of your body, the back body, the belly, the hips, and sending that beautiful tube of light down into the earth and allowing earth's light to come back into you, grounding you and supporting you, bringing you into a greater space of inner healing, inner blessings, as you are grounded and supported by earth's energy. Take some deep breaths and just imagine this energy exchange now between you and the earth. And if it feels right, sensing your belly, your solar plexus and your heart and just allowing the back body, the head, the shoulders, the inner sanctuary of your energy self to receive love and light and kindness and truth. And just resonating there in your own, your own central channel of light that extends from your lowest energy center up through near the spine in the center of the body, through the entire body, like a tube of light that goes up all the energy centers. And you might feel a subtle flow, a presence, or something else. So just accepting and allowing the way you experience yourself right now, your body, your energy, your thoughts, and bring that word allowing just as a reminder to be yourself. Easy, relaxed, present. And take a nice deep breath in and a full breath out. And just imagine your own inner truth radiating out in every direction. If you wish to bring your hands into the process, just allowing energy, light, transformation, truth, radiance to surround you. And it can feel like a beautiful kind of energy shower or wash, a purification, a connection, whatever it feels for you. Or there may be no feeling, no something, and just allowing that, allowing any movements, stretching, yawning. And give yourself a hug. Change sides and hug yourself again. And feeling your legs and your feet, do a little stomping if you'd like, a little patting, make your legs a drum. I like to tap the chest a little. <laughs> and when you're ready, taking a drink of water. So, that was our guided journey. And, you know, feel free to continue meditating or processing whatever you received. If you have any shares or questions about this process today, please, please write them in the, in the chat or raise your hand. I know it can take a little time to kind of come back. And um, 
I encourage you to, to take some notes now on, on what you experienced, um, whether there was a guide or teacher or ancestor or a metaphor of some kind. Um, how did you sense in that journey? Was it more kinesthetic or auditory or visual or an inner knowing without perhaps that same kind of sensory information? And yeah, I'm going to just go to Melanie and Amanda. Hi, Melanie. Oh. Hi, Molly. How are you? Great. That was fun. It was. It was. This was an incredible meditation. And I've done this one before. So I had a sense of what it was about. Um, and what what I experienced was so deeply personal and normally I wouldn't share in a public forum, but I don't know, I thought maybe it would be beneficial. So I wanted to share with people. Um, so my journey took me to one of my favorite places to go, a lake that's in the area um, that's surrounded by all kinds of, you know, stairs and trees, forests, bridges, you know, all kinds of things. And so I journeyed to there and um, when you said you approach sort of like maybe a bridge or stairs or um, I actually moved to a different part of the lake, which was not where I was imagining myself going, but then there was a bench and one of the, this was so fascinating to me, the teacher that um, revealed um, was an ancestral shaman. Mm -hmm of um, Native American descent um, and he was male, he was older and he was in full dress, just seated at the bench. And so I sat down and, you know, a lot of the exchange was um, energetic, more, I would say kinesthetic yeah. than auditory. Um, and then he just started sharing certain messages with me. And one of um, the things that I have been feeling a lot in the past recent years is I've been feeling very unsafe mm -hmm. emotionally, but also just physically unsafe. And I find myself feeling more unsafe out outside of my home and in physical spaces and public spaces. And that was one of the things that he shared is specific things to work on. You know, he said, continue to strengthen your mind continue to strengthen your spirit and continue to strengthen your intuition. Mm. And I've been, um, I think I mentioned a few weeks ago, I've been having this experience where I've had a few car accidents where my car was hit. You know, I didn't even think these cars were hitting me. And so I've been on a healing journey physically. And he said, continue on your physical healing journey. And he said, through these practices of strengthening yourself, you'll lessen your fear. And you'll feel more safe. Oh, and the most, and then the most touching thing, I felt like this was such serendipity that when you were saying to, you know, sort of wind down with, um, with your spirit guide, your higher self, um, he said, you know, do these things. And he also told me to experience more physical touch. I'm a little bit averse to that, you know, and so, you know, he said, just find ways to experience physical touch and he physically, oh, wow. Wow. Put, you know, through my back, like all over, all the way down to my feet. And, and then he just sort of sent me on my way and he said, you will be well, you will be well, you will be well. Thank you. What a gift that you shared this with us. Like, really? Thank you, Melanie. Yeah. You're welcome. It just so brought me back to this group because you always say that. And I say it to people all the time. I say, be well, you know, may you be well. And he just, he just kept saying it as I walked away. You so I just that. wanted to share that. Thank you. Group. Thank you. I really, I think you gave us all a blessing with that sharing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And Amanda, hello. 
I have to say it brought me to some tears what Melanie shared. (laughs) I'm just really happy for you, Melanie, because uh, I I know some of the stuff you've been going through and I'm just, uh, that's, I'm glad you got some healing around it. So that's, that's a good thing. (laughs) I'm happy for you. That's awesome. Um, I had a question for you, Magalie. Yeah. This is a little is a little different. Um, I, I'd like to explore this one more. I think yeah. I should do it a few more times. I can identify with the feeling of safety and being prepared, um, things like that. But it was almost like I started out uh, when I was a kid. I lived in this neighborhood that um, behind a church was like a big forest, and we used to play back there all the time. And um, it's um there's a lot of trees and it's the oddest thing I found this place back there one day when I was playing and I was usually by myself a lot of the time so not all the time but some days mm-hmm. and um I would get out when other people wouldn't get out you know it'd be like raining and I would go out <laughs> but um I remember going like deep into the woods there and there was just this area where it was nothing but moss all over the ground everywhere and I used to play back there. So in trees, the trees were really thick. And I went up the hill and there was a lake and there was a boat dock. And I went out and tried to sit on the dock for a minute. And then a boat came up. Okay, just hold a on, Amanda. Boat. I was just so there with you and I forgot. Is this your journey or is this really in your childhood? Well, it's um, the the forest part with the um the moss is real okay <laughs> the lake the lake and the boat docked up at the top of it's not real okay. <laughs> so the, okay. I trained, or it's real it's just I not ordinary reality it. okay yeah. I was just going with you and then I realized my mind lost track of are we yeah. sharing about the journey or are we share so okay so it was so, in the journey yeah it was in the yeah. journey okay. and um so I went to a place that I knew and then went up the hill and there was a lake there and um, a boat came up and it was the oddest thing. Uh, I don't know why, but I, you know, I just got in the boat and it was almost like it was a lake, but I had a little trouble, you know, when the, when the guide was supposed to come in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there, all of a sudden was a butterfly in a jar on the edge of the boat in the front Mm -hmm. and I don't know why it was in a jar (laughs) but um a little butterfly was there and I thought well am I supposed to I try not to judge it and let things unfold but sometimes it's hard so I was um wondering the water you know I'm really close to the water and I thought am I supposed to lean over and look at myself because I had this feeling of just inner knowing um you know that what I needed to do, what I, that there, I was going to be fine if I step through the fear, um, if I just keep rowing, that it was going to go from a lake to, you know, open up into something bigger. And um, I just went out there halfway and the butterfly told me to turn around and I turned around and went back to the boat dock and let it out. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know. It's just the oddest thing. Like, I don't know if it was trying to tell me that I just need to keep rowing or if I, um, you so know, that's maybe great. that's great that you're, you know, asking this now. So I would write that down. And you know how we've talked about going back to the journey again, mm-hmm. you can return with a very clear question whatever the question is you have about the butterfly's meaning or the jar or the boat. And it it sounds like this was not your experience of the journey, but as an example to other people, the boat could have been the teacher. That's what I thought. Like it was it because it it came to me before the butterfly was there. Uh Uh-huh. And And the butterfly and the jar could be a message of some kind. Okay. You know, we that's just an option. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage you to go back into it, into these, I think, very powerful metaphors and experience. And we can, you can go back into a journey with a question. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank thank you you for sharing. And I have to say in that beginning, when you were talking about the moss and everything, (laughs) I just like, I, I joined you there. That was very cool. 
So thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks. Yeah. And Katrine, hello. Hello. Am say, hi, am I saying your name right? Yes, Katrina. Yes. Katrina, wonderful. Yes, this was uh, very beautiful. I've attended several Mondays. And, but today I went to beach, beaches we don't have in Norway, has to be said. Uh, and, but I can see myself. I just see a white energy something mm. and I'm floating. I'm not walking anywhere. And I can't, so only seeing things. And when we, when I was walking to the next step, uh, my teacher was my dog mm. for 14 years ago. And he is always coming. Every Monday, my dog is coming to me. Wow. And I want freedom yeah. and not, I want spiritual, I want freedom in all of the sense of the word. Yeah. Uh, so physical, mentally, spiritual, I want freedom to do what I want to do. Yeah. And I want love and I want joy. And that dog is the epiphany of that. So we were done, I was sitting here and dancing and smiling <laughs> with my dog. So it was that. fantastic, but why can't I see myself? I can, I'm only white. I'm a white, the white cat dog or yeah. something. Yeah, well, do you think that that might have to do with your higher self or your truth, this white, this white experience, this light? Is it like know. a white light? Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps it's my energy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't well, know. In, in many traditions, it's spoken about that our, our greatest truth is this kind of luminous quality within and and that that's a radiating light and so you could go back into the journey and ask yeah to be shown more about your human you know your your everyday self in 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 this harmony with that light yeah um, i have to say i can only see things i don't smell i don't hear except yeah. i heard freedom of George Michael. <laughs> well, that's, that's, is that, is that good? Yeah, freedom. I want freedom. Yeah, and you felt it. So it sounds yeah. pretty good to me. Yeah, so that's, but otherwise, otherwise yeah. I don't, yeah, so. It's important to really um, take in the depth of your own experience. So everybody here just to acknowledge the way you experience and the depth of that, because sometimes we can, I'm not saying you're doing this Katrina, but sometimes we can have a, a, a tendency. I've had this tendency in the past to kind of discount our experience because we expect it to be somehow a little different. So just noticing if there was some expectation or if you have some kind of wish for it to be a certain way mm -hmm. and then how it was and honor yourself for the way it was, for the way you experienced it. I've done that before on Mondays because I've, oh, the other one have so profound uh, meditation. I, I feel a little bit shallow. I felt that before, yes. Uh, so uh, no, but it, it's really nice. Every Monday, this is me time. And it's late in the evening here in Norway. The sun is going down. Yeah. So. Oh, well, sometimes the journey will continue into your dream. Yeah. So you can okay. set an intention as you dream to learn more about yourself in that light or the dog or any part of your journey. Freedom, you know, just to let the dream give you that wisdom. Yeah. Okay. So All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And Carol, hello. Hold on a sec. I think you have to hit unmute. There we go. Great. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Well, I've been so excited about, I, I never did Zoom before, and I've had been struggling as both Jeremy and Linda know, and they've been angels helping me. And today was such an amazing meditation, and I am filled with 
a lot of emotion, so much gratitude for this is really uh, uh, me embodying uh, symbols of my life's journey in recent years. And well, not quite recent, but not that many, I guess. And so I found myself in a scene uh, in, uh, it was off the coast of Florida. And as much as, and how important it is to me now, I can't even think of the name. I want to say Bali, but it wasn't Bali. At any rate, I was in a scene uh, at a blue lagoon, and it was so quiet and peaceful and loving. Mm -hmm. And I was with my husband, and we had just um, repeated our vows on a ship. And so we had all this wonderful connection, even more than usual, uh, to um, to share together. And I find myself going to that place to feel love, to feel my own love, to feel my own inner strength. And, and then I traveled again. It was like, there's so many aspects, only one more travel. And I was in Israel at the top of Masada. And this is quite a number of years ago. And I remember being at the top of Masada, but this was a whole different vision that I had. And I allowed it to come in and it seemed to be inviting me to immerse my whole being in this moment, which I did. And uh, I, I want to remember all of it, that it was so intense that the experience that I had without as many details, I wrote it down and I can't even write my, read my writing, but the experience that I have, which is most meaningful to me, is that the divine thread that runs through my life is all about connection. And it uh, and in my current life today, I'm not experiencing that in the way that I have in the past. And there's work to do. And I'm trying and it ain't easy. So uh, wow. I find that I still have, I've lived a long time. And I still have at this point in my life, these wonderful memories that the opportunity to anchor into them and know that that's all part of me in this moment in time. And um, I thank you. I am so grateful for being in this program. And I look forward. I have dreams of how I want to make it work on graduation. And uh, it's been an unusual time for me in the last few years with COVID. And um, I didn't have COVID, but the isolation. Yeah. And, you know, I've wanted to share so many times to say some of this. Mm, thank and, you for sharing this. I could not get there. So <laughs> thank you for being, having created this environment for all of us to learn and grow and then take it to the streets. <laughs> I love that. Take it to the streets and the forest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. Very, very deep. And, and I'm glad you wrote it down. I, I'm like you. Sometimes I can't read my writing, but take your time to reprocess it. That's it's a beautiful thing to reprocess that journey, you know? And also to feel the, the afterglow for all of us, just to kind of feel the afterglow of 
whatever our experience was in a journey. So um, hopefully no one has to drive anywhere right away, but if you do take some like good, like bouncy steps before you get in a car, okay? <laughs> All right, Cynthia, hello. Hi, can you hear me? I can, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I wanted to, uh, I've done I've done this journey quite a few times and I've gone to different places. Sometimes it was the same, but um, I've been going to different places recently and, and this time was no different. I, I kind of tend to um, start off in a forested area with the lake and these big boulders that I can sit on, but um, I just, I felt this was different this time. I don't know if it's the way you let it, it seemed a little different. Um, but I used a bridge this time, which was, I never did before. And, um, as I was walking over the bridge, I remember there was some reluctance and I was just, I was kind of, I, I, I don't know. I just felt like there was this reluctance for moving from place to place. I don't know if it was just, I, I have a tendency to want to go slower. Um, but there was a reluctance of moving, but one thing that I wanted to say that I think you did beautifully, and I'm so grateful to you. Um, and I make, I want to make sure that I always add that in. I loved how you added, um, or at least for me, it was at an addition, the smiling, um, because that helped me so much. Yeah. Um, and so I really wanted to point that out because, and I wrote it even in my notes, um, because any time that I felt a reluctance or a sadness, because after um, I moved even to this, after I crossed the bridge and I had these, um, this beautiful uh, new landscape open up for me, which wasn't a foresty place. It was like a grassy wood uh, meadow with flowers. And there was like these big oak trees. And I actually, there was a swing I sat in and it was just this beautiful, really bright, beautiful place. And I saw myself, I could see my feet walking through the grass and mm -hmm. it was just wonderful. But when I was in that higher place and I had my experience with my guided, my guide, and I didn't want to leave. And so I was really reluctant again, when he told us to turn around and come back, I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to go. And so that I felt that reluctance again to go back down over the bridge. But then again, you brought in that smile again mm -hmm. and it made it all okay. Because, and that's, and it, I was, I didn't want to leave. And I felt like I hadn't got my answers, all my answers yet. But when, when you brought in that smile, I got an answer and I was like, it, it made it all okay. And it, it, I don't know if it's, I think, you, I mean, you do have endorphins released when you smile. So it, there may be a little bit of a chemical, you know, uh, addition there, mm -hmm. but it was such a beautiful um, aid for me to just have that little bit of a smile um, to feel the energy of that. And it just made, made it easier for me to get over any reluctance that I had to move um, through the journey. I'm and so um, and I was able to get from, because I have, I also have a tendency to want to live in kind of an expanded spacey, airy space. <laughs> And so I like being there. I don't ever want to come back out of my journeys. Yeah. And so when I came back to, you know, cross the bridge again and came back down into the other place, the smile helped me make it okay. Like it's going to be okay to come oh, back wow. out. And that's where I got another little message at the end saying that, that, well, this is where the work needs to be done though. You can't be in that, mm. that spacey place all the time, even though you love it so much. I, I do. Um, yeah. I, I, gotta, I can relate. I understand. <laughs> yeah. I, I got a little message saying so, it's okay. The work needs to be done here. So, so I love your share. Thank you, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. It's always like just such a pleasure to experience your shares. And I wanted to make a suggestion, if you don't mind, please, just like a li little, a little one. Yeah. And this goes for anyone who feels that this resonates with them. It can help once a week. Mm -hmm. to give yourself, and I know you don't have young children anymore. It's different, of course, if we have obligations or young children, but if you can to give yourself one meditation time or journey time with unlimited time. I may never come back. <laughs> <laughs> we think that that can be, but, but actually you, you always come back. Your body makes you come back. Okay. So, um, 
but just try it. See what it's like one time to say no clock on this. Yeah. Because you might, it may be kind of that next level of experience for you. I trust that. I understand that we're all living in a linear time frame, and we need yeah. to come back and we need to do the work on the streets as, as I believe Carol said yeah. so beautifully. Um, but of course, in that realm of expansion, there's incredible work being done by you, even if you're not consciously aware of it. Yeah. So when you can, whether it's in dream time or in meditation or journey, just to once in a while, give yourself a holiday there. That's how I see it. It's a holiday. Yeah. So. Well, I, I know there's so much work being done in that space. And, and because thankfully I've done this a few times and I've practiced with you and, and on my own, um, I actually had a quick experience. I can tell it quickly. I think this week, um, it actually was yesterday. I have trouble with tremors and shaking. Um, and that comes with regulation I, I, or dysregulation. I don't know. It's just, a, they call it essential tremors, but um, I was having a lot of trouble with it yesterday, but there is a way for me to kind of control it. Supposedly you can't, but I feel like meditation totally helps me bring it down and calm it. And I was able to, in a moment, because it was really, really bad yesterday as I was sitting with my husband somewhere and he helps me, he'll, he'll hold me or he'll hold my legs or he'll do whatever to try to help calm me down sometimes. And it, you know, where people don't notice as much, he'll just like put his arm around me or put his leg, you know, hold my legs um, when I gets really bad, but he was like, man, are you okay? You know, cause it was really bad yesterday, but I just closed my eyes for a moment and I went to that place. And I, and I just thought, okay, I can do this. And I went to that place just for a moment. And I just, I saw myself walking through one of those grassy fields and just taking some deep breaths. And I saw, I spent a moment with my guide and it was, it was like that. And my husband, like, and, and it, it really only took 60 seconds, if even that. And my husband looked at me, he's like, what happened? Because my shaking stopped that quickly and I it's the first time I've ever been able to control it that quickly that is beautiful wow. and and I didn't realize how how and I know meditation helps you relax but I got to almost like that dream light state where you're just so calm you almost can put yourself to sleep yep. and that's what happened I got so relaxed and my shaking just stopped and I thought okay there's something to this I need to do this a whole lot more that's incredible. And it sounds like you're just developing that skill and that ability to go that this is exactly what happens when, when a person like you gets into that skillful place mm -hmm. with being able to be in ordinary reality and non-ordinary reality, you could say at the same time, and it yeah. helps affect the body as well as everything else. So yeah. Mm, I just so I wish I could do it that. every time I start shaking but well you, know, you could it's, yeah I mean I'm it'll try. be interesting to see <laughs> yeah and and let's talk more about the shaking sometime maybe yeah. in, when privately or in class or something yeah thank okay. you all right absolutely but I appreciate the smiles that's really what I want oh to good about. well okay <laughs> I have to tell you guys something so higher self journey is like I have several scripts I've written for it that I train the coaches to use. And it's a process like for many of you, that's well known. And for me, it's well known. And um, in this time, in this meditation, I really turned it over to my higher self to guide that meditation. So um, when I spoke about the smile, that was completely the higher self speaking about the smile. Magli would not have had no plan to say that, no thoughts about that. Also bringing in the values so much was really a kind of, it's not in the script, <laughs> let's say that. And um, also 
uh, there was definitely, I was receiving a lot of guidance about grounding the energy at the end, the hugging, um, the going to the central channel and spending more time receiving healing and experience after the journey was done as a form of integration. So those of you who are learning to guide this, um, I just wanted to note that the smile, the values, the extra time processing and grounding. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Um, just wanted to bring attention. And we have one more share. Tikor or Tikor, tell me how to say your name, please. Hi, uh, Hi. it's Tikor. Um, I've been following, thank you very much, Natalie. Um, I just want to say that this just been, it has always been the same experience for me, so I'm quite, um, I'm quite embarrassed to say, <laughs> but I always fall asleep. I followed through until, you know, the smile part and I could see a little girl running about and happy and joyful. Um, but I just, I just, I always sleep. I don't know why. How, how is the sleep? It's deep and it's. Yeah. Does it, do you deep. feel restored after? Do you feel it? Yes, a I do, but I just feel like I've missed so much and everything else. Oh. Well, I, I think it can be very beneficial to sleep through journeys. This is something that in, in many of the, the groups I've attended where we're doing this kind of work, some people do sleep and receive healing in that state. So don't discount or discredit that experience. Um, if you want to be more awake, I know it's hard to do, but try to do it standing up or raise your arms up. So if you start to fall asleep, they'll wake you up. It's a little different but it can be very powerful to do this standing with permission to move or dance or stretch as you do the journey. Okay. And then let me know, let me know what happens if you try that. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. You. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And Maria, Maria Inez. Hello. Oh, hold on. Oh, I, hold have on. To... I have to. I spotlighted myself and I need to unspotlight myself. There you are. Great. Hello, Magali. Hello. Hello. Uh, today it was very special to me because uh, this is the day that I have decided uh, a few months ago that I would send my. Um, termination letter I don't know mm -hmm. to my company I don't know if I'm saying it correctly yeah and I I did it a few minutes uh, before the meditation and um, it was very beautiful what happened in the meditation process because um, it, it was very difficult for me to to um, to make the decision uh, a few months ago when to send a letter today but my higher self was uh, there for me mm -hmm. and was sending me lots of love and comfort and support and thank you thank you for this moment <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing today it's a very important day and the meditation was beautiful thank you thank you so much thank you and i want to hear more from you later on about how things progress yeah, yeah. thank you yeah. thank you all right guys it was it was great to be here with you and connect and and do this journey together so feel free to write in the chat um if anyone is not part of Coaching Institute and wants to learn more about what we do here, you can go to coachinginstitute.com. If you want to listen to more of the meditations, you can go to our Coaching Institute Facebook, which other than, I don't know if there's some special underscores or something you need to do, Jeremy can put it in the chat. We have all the videos there of the meditations. 
and also um, Magali Pesha on YouTube. I, I put up not as regularly as I should, but I do once in a while put up the videos there and I'm going to be trying to add more there soon. So be well, everybody. And, and I hope that you continue your journey whenever it is next that you fall asleep at night. Um, if you want to set an intention before you sleep to learn more from your teacher, guide, your higher self, in dream time and um or do a journey a follow-up journey that you guide yourself in um with a question from the journey you had today if you wish all right guys talk soon meditate together again i hope soon be well bye bye <laughs>